Hi, my name is Oliver Alonzo, and I'll be presenting our work titled Automatic Text Simplification Tools for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Adults, Benefits of Lexical Simplification, and Providing Users with Autonomy. This work was done at the Rochester Institute of Technology in collaboration with my colleagues Matthew Seda, Abraham Glasser, and my advisor Matt Unerfeld. The main motivation for our work is considering that about one in six adults in the United States is deaf or hard of hearing, Research has found great diversity among their literacy skills. While some deaf and hard of hearing readers can be excellent readers, some studies have found that over 17% of deaf and hard of hearing adults have low literacy. Other studies observed fourth grade reading levels among deaf and hard of hearing high school graduates, as well as lower educational outcomes, employment rates, and salaries as compared to hearing peers. Now, Automatic text simplification consists of machine learning based techniques to identify and replace complex text, making it easier to understand. This can be done at the syntactic level, which entails reordering sentences or phrases to make them easier to understand, but it can also be done at the lexical level, replacing complex words with simpler synonyms or a hybrid combination of both. Researchers have explored its use as a reading assistance tool, so we investigate its use for deaf and hard of hearing readers. Researchers have explored using text simplification to provide reading assistance to different user groups, including people with aphasia, dyslexia, or second language learners. One may wonder why not simply use translation, and in the case of deaf and hard hearing readers, there's two main reasons why simplification is also worth exploring. First, not all deaf and hard hearing people are fluent in American Sign Language, and the state of the art in, tr in translation is not yet sufficient to support reading tasks. Also, Prior work has not only observed the language learning benefits from simplification, but also non-native readers in one study preferred simplification over translation when they were provided with both. Furthermore, prior work has already observed benefits from providing deaf and hard of hearing adults with syntactic simplification, but no prior work evaluated the use of lexical simplification with, with deaf and hard of hearing adults. So that leads to our first of our two research questions. Does providing a lexical reading assistance tool affect deaf and hard of hearing users' perception of their ease in reading a text or their perception of how well they understood it? Our second research question came from another way to look at the related work, which is from the point of view of the user interface. Prior work has identified that visual design alone can affect text readability, with some studies finding benefits from highlighting paragraphs or changing the font or line heights, just to give a few examples. However, little work on text simplification has focused on the user interface. Most work has focused on evaluating its quality and effects. One study which compared the quality of different simplification systems found that users preferred systems that provided on-demand simplifications, suggesting the importance of investigating the user interface effects on user subjective impressions. Whether users are provided with simplifications on demand relate to the user's autonomy within the software system. So we looked at related HCI work on user autonomy, and it has been found to increase motivation and desire to use software. However, it has also been found to increase complexity or cognitive load, so there may be some fine tuning required. Also, ethics, HCI, and accessibility work have advocated for allowing users to make their own choices when using AI, only providing AI services when needed, and also moving away from paternalistic approaches in accessibility in which assistive technologies make choices for their users. So we looked at how different user designs using prior reading assistant work with text simplification varied in terms of the autonomy that they allowed the users. The first aspect that we found was the level of control users are provided in terms of how they request a simplification. The second aspect was the visibility the system provides as to what words have been replaced. So this context leads to our second research question. Are deaf and hard of hearing users' subjective preferences about lexical simplification tools affected by whether they're provided with greater autonomy, specifically in requesting simplifications on demand? or seeing what words have been replaced. So we created early prototypes which included different levels that we had identified from prior work for the two autonomy factors that we identified. 
First, the level of control users are provided in terms of how they request a simplification, which we call the user initiative. This factor had five levels which varied in the degree of autonomy they provided. The first level, which has been used in prior work and we call automatic, provided no user autonomy, automatically replacing all words before the user saw it. The second level was similar to the automatic in that it replaced all words at once, but allowed the user the autonomy to request this. Then we had a level called suggestions, which has been used in prior work in which complex words are decorated to suggest potential words to simplify to the user, as shown in the illustration to the right. Another level similar to suggestions allowed the user to turn the decoration on and off, providing more autonomy. Finally, a level used in prior work allowed the user to request simplifications on any word without providing suggestions. We call this level no suggestions. On the other hand, we had the design factor related to the visibility of the words that were changed, which we called change visibility. This factor had four levels, beginning with one we called sidebar, which has been used in prior work and displays simplifications in a separate region to the side of the window, so it preserved the original text unchanged. The second level provided the simpler synonym as a pop-up right above a word that has been hovered over, also maintaining the text unchanged. While the two previous levels left the original text unchanged, the third level replaced the word with a simpler synonym in place and decorated it to convey that a change had occurred. We call this level trace. Finally, we included a level in which the word was replaced in place but without any decorations, which we called no trace. Now, because we had two factors with four and five levels, 20 would have been too many combinations for an experimental study. So we conducted a preliminary study to identify one or two prototypes that we could, we could use in our experimental study. To do this, we showed participants videos with high visual fidelity of the prototype with each user initiative design level and each change visibility design level. After each video, participants discussed advantages and disadvantages of each prototype and rated how likely they were to use each one of them. We provided a lot more details in the, about this study in our paper, but our main takeaway was the conditions that we would include in the final prototype for our experimental study. Our prototype supported four conditions for our experimental study. The first was informed by our preliminary study, which allowed users to toggle suggestions and traced which words had been replaced. We call this condition decoration, and it's illustrated on the slide by showing the phrase the quintessential birds, with quintessential highlighted in gray, indicating that it's a complex word, and then replaced with typical, which is highlighted in yellow. Then, also informed by a preliminary study, we had a condition we called pop-up, which provided no suggestions, but displayed a pop-up with, with a simpler synonym if a user hover over a word with such a synonym available. This condition is illustrated in the slide by showing typical above quintessential on the same sample phrase. Both of these conditions provided simplifications on demand. However, we also included a condition which applied simplifications automatically with no user autonomy, which we called automatic. This one's illustrated on the, side, on the slide with typical replacing quintessential without any visual indications. By providing no autonomy, this condition served as a baseline for our second research question, which was concerned with whether participants' subjective impressions of the tools will be affected by whether they're provided with greater autonomy. Finally, we had a condition which presented the text in its original form without any simplifications, which served as a baseline for our first research question, which investigated whether there were benefits from providing lexical simplification. Now, because of the state of the art in automatic text simplification is not perfect yet, our prototype was creating use it using a Wizard of Oz approach. So we used the human-made simplifications assisted by Par4Sim, which is a writing tool that identifies complex words and suggests simpler synonyms, and also simple PPDB++, a resource containing lexical paraphrases with readability scores. Two deaf researchers and a hearing researcher whose native language is not English used Par4Sim to identify complex words and potential replacements. If no appropriate replacements were found, then they would query a simple PPDB++ or Google until a simpler synonym was found. 
As stimuli for our studies, we used four texts from the Science Daily website, which had reading levels from 12th grade to 17th grade and ranged from 617 to 682 words in length. Between 40 and 70 simplifications were applied to the texts, which reduced the reading levels by about a grade level. Each text was assigned a condition from the four conditions or prototypes supported, which were counterbalanced using a Latin square schedule. After each text, we asked participants subjective evaluation questions identified from prior work, which included, this text was easy to read, and I was able to understand this question well. We also included comprehension questions to motivate participants to actually read the texts. At the end of the study, participants also rated how likely they were to use each prototype. They then filled out the sentence comprehension section of the Wide Range Achievement Test, a standardized literacy test known to be effective among deaf and hard of hearing readers. At the end, we also informed participants about the Wizard of Oz nature of our study. We had 25 participants in this study, 10 of which identified as male, 14 as female, and 1 as non-binary. Their average age was 23.5, 16 identified as culturally deaf, which is typically written with a capital D, 3 as hard of hearing, and 6 as deaf. The average WRAT score was 83.04, which is lower than the average of 100 for adults in the United States. Now for the question, I was able to understand this text well. A Friedman test indicated a significant difference between the condition, and postdoc pairwise comparisons indicated a significant difference between both of the conditions that provided lexical simplification on demand and the original and the original condition, with users indicating stronger agreement for the pop-up and decoration conditions. These results, in response to our first research question, we suggested participants perceived the benefit from prototypes that provided them with lexical simplification in terms of how well they were able to, able to understand the text. Now, when looking at the response to how likely they were to use each of the prototypes that included simplification, there were significant differences between both of the conditions that provided them with simplifications on demand and the automatic one, with participants indicated, indicating they would be more likely to use the pop-up and decorations conditions. These results, in response to our second research question, suggest that the level of user autonomy does affect their preferences of the system, with greater autonomy increasing their likelihood to use the system. The reason that was mentioned more often for this preference was an ability to learn, or in the words of participant 21, I like to know what words were originally used. I have no way of knowing what words were used when it was automatically simplified, therefore no way to learn. Participants also discussed trade-offs between both of the prototypes that provided them with simplifications on demand. Participant 9, for example, preferred the pop-up condition because it allowed them to reread the text as it was. Participant 4, in turn, found the curations less distracting. For more discussions on the trade-offs, please refer to the paper. Now, of course, there were many limitations with our study. One is that we only looked at lexical simplification but comparisons with syntactic simplification or combinations of both should be explored in future work. Also, we did not include a baseline which allowed us to discard the potential for response bias from participants towards the conditions that provided visual indications of replacement. We also had included comprehension questions in our study as a way to motivate readers to read carefully, but we did not observe any significant differences in their scores. We provide more details about this in the paper, but because of this, in future work, we will conduct methodological studies on comprehension questions, as well as other objective measurements, such as reading speed and eye tracking, as a way to measure benefits from text simplification for deaf and hard of hearing readers. Another limitation was that, because we used the Wizard of Oz approach, our prototype may not be reflective of the current state of the art in automatic text simplification. So future work should investigate how the introduction of errors may affect the benefits and subjective impressions of users. Finally, our preliminary study was formative in nature and did not allow us to fully explore the design space, but future work should look into other aspects of the user interface of these tools. To conclude, we investigated the use of lexical simplification as reading assistance for deaf and hard of hearing users. We observed that users perceived the benefit from designs that incorporated lexical simplification and users preferred designs that provided them with greater autonomy. This work was conducted at the Center for Accessibility and Inclusion Research and was supported by the National Fi Science Foundation under award number 
182747. And finally, I want to thank you for watching this presentation, and please feel free to send any of us an email if you have any questions.